Prince versus New York City. Hey everybody, I am Vince of Geekvolution and welcome to Vince versus Vince versus what? Vince versus New York City. That's right. Everybody from New York City is coming here and we're going to have a battle royale. That's right. That's that's not even close to true. Anyway, so uh, Vince, why New York City? Because that was the first city we stopped at for the honeymoon. Uh, for So, again, the honeymoon. Yes, that's right. So we did a video about the marriage, and uh, now I'm doing a video about the honeymoon. I wanted to shoot this stuff on location, but uh, it was such it was such kind of a whirlwind of events that we... Well, I just decided well, I was going to come back and shoot it here anyway. But, uh, so, so... No, I brought all this stuff with me to New York and set it up exactly the same. You have no idea. So, we went to New York City first on the honeymoon. We, we took a tour of four cities. We went to uh, New York City, we went to Atlantic City, we went to Washington, D.C., and we went to Philadelphia. So we saw four cities in seven days. And, uh, of course, we didn't do everything in these places, but uh, it really gave... I'd never been to the East Coast. Uh, I've been up and down the, uh, the, the Midwest, but... Uh, well, I take that back. I've been to Connecticut. But uh, I didn't see much of the stuff around there. I went to a convention with my brother. He wanted to go, so we went to this convention, and that was really the uh, the, the extent of the East Coast that I've seen. But I've so I've seen the Midwest, but uh, until recently, I'd never really looked around the East Coast. So, so my wife and I we went to New York City, and we. We flew into JFK Airport. Uh, we had the, we went, we stayed at the Hotel Pennsylvania. It was uh, a really pretty interesting place with these heavy metal valet doors, which I know is a valet door because there was a plaque on the front of it that said, "This is a valet door made in 1919." And I said, "Oh well, isn't that fancy?" So <laughs> uh, it was interesting. It was kind of antiquated. There there were. It wasn't an extremely up-to-date hotel, which doesn't really matter. It was it was it had a lot of character. It was really interesting, and uh, so it was a pretty simple room, but it had a lot of character. Anyway, so we get there, we get to the hotel, and then we decide we're going to go to the Empire State Building because it's extremely close to the uh, to the hotel. Now I'll say this: the Empire State Building was packed. Now, that shouldn't be surprising because uh, uh, the, the sidewalks were packed. That, that city has so many people in it that it was kind of a culture shock for me. I wasn't ready for it. I didn't, I didn't realize how many people there was going to be. Now, I've seen a lot of people before. I've been in rooms with loads and loads of people. Uh, I've been at events with loads and loads of people. But generally, it's an event. New York is just packed from dusk till dawn, man. There's so many people out there. It's kind of it's kind of impressive to me. It's kind of amazing. Now, they call it the city that never sleeps. Uh, sure. But there's so many people out there that it's just surprised me, and it wasn't something I was ready for. It made me kind of nervous for maybe the first uh, X amount of hours that I was there. So I didn't quite know how to handle it. But, uh, I'll tell you this, you get used to it. You get used to how many people are out there. Now, I'm going to try to dispel a myth about New Yorkers here real quick. Uh, I've always heard, now, now, bear with me because I'm trying to dispel the myth. Uh, I've always heard that New Yorkers are rude, that New Yorkers are kind of mean or whatever. Uh, I'll say this, every interaction that I had with a New Yorker was uh, quite, quite, a pleasant experience. I I didn't really get a lot of rude people. Now I'll say this, but there's so many people that when you're on the sidewalk, you kind of get this crowd mentality. You become an independent agent, and you are going wherever you're going. It's interesting how many people are walking with their eyes down, and they'll bump into you. And you know when you're in Kansas, because uh, because that's where I am. When you're in Kansas, if you bump into somebody, you turn around and say, "Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that." And they're like, "Oh, quite all right." Whatever. Or, or, or yeah, you my my fault. I didn't mean whatever. There's there's certain pleasantries that come into everyday interaction, but uh, in New York, people just kind of bump into each other and keep walking. They don't even one. They don't think about it as being rude. Two. They don't think about it even apologizing because largely it's unavoidable. It's something that you can't control because there's so many people. Now, I would say that you can you could cat or you could characterize New Yorkers as being a bit cold when it comes to that crowd attitude, 
but uh, largely New Yorkers are like anybody else. Uh, they're, they're generally pleasant people. Uh, generally, not everybody's a good person. Not everybody's a bad person. It's it you know it's an individual basis. And I'll say that uh, every time that I had an uh, an interaction with a New Yorker, it was largely pleasant. So uh, uh, myth dispelled for me. That's interesting to me. Now that being said, everybody with their eyes down kind of made me go, well, let's look up. So. <laughs> So, one of the things that my wife and I did that we really got a big kick out of was looking at all the architecture in, uh, in New York. Now, for a lot of people, they're like, well, yeah, it's New York. What do you have in Kansas? Well, we have some old buildings in Kansas, but that's the thing, is that in New York, there's a lot of old buildings. Stuff that is really ornate and interesting, and there's, there's lots of interesting stonework, and there's lots of interesting shapes to buildings. Uh, people are doing interesting th now a lot of their new buildings are interesting too uh, there was one building that had one side that was kind of this uh, uh, angular wavy shape and I thought oh Lena look at that oh my god and uh, I, I was just so impressed by how much interesting stuff there was and now granted we were largely in Manhattan uh, I would have liked to have seen more of this city but uh, it is what it is we had seven days and we went to four cities so we didn't get to see everything now, if I ever go back, I'll take a Marvel tour or something like that and see where, where some of these places were, have inspired the characters. Because now that I've been there, reading Marvel comics is kind of an interesting experience. I, I kind of wonder what people who, who are from New York City, how they feel when they read stuff that's set in their town. Because uh, now it's not this mythical place. I'm like, oh, I, I know where that is. Okay, in relation, I can tell where they're going and why it looks the way it does. But uh, anyway, uh, so we went to the Empire State Building, and it was packed wall to wall, people trying to get inside. And uh, it was the people who were working there were having to herd us like cattle because there were people stopping to take pictures of something that they were going to see on their way out anyway. <laughs> and the guy said, No, no, keep going. Take a picture later. You'll get through here. Take a picture later. So uh, they. They had to keep the crowd moving, and it was interesting to me how many people were there. Now, we got there, and it was light outside, and two hours later we get to the top and it's dark, so we kind of wanted to get a good look at the city, but uh, oh well. Uh, what we would really got was, it was just dark enough to where you couldn't see everything, but uh, it was just light enough to where you could see most things, and uh, it was also just dark enough to where a lot of these buildings had turned on their lights, and uh, it was a really pretty scene. Now, I don't really have to go in-depth because uh, I think most people have either seen pictures from the top or, or movies that have things shot at the top. But uh, just to give you my experience, it also it started to get kind of stormy when we got to the top. So we didn't spend a lot of time. We kind of went to the sides, uh, looked around, uh, had a, took some pictures, and left. So uh, we, we got... a some little fun things from there too, whatever. So we spent quite a lot of time in the Empire State Building. And then we went back and went to bed because we spent so much time in the Empire State Building just to get to the top and then get out of there. It was kind of ridiculous. But, uh, so, the second day in New York, Monday, uh, I think is going to rank among one of my favorite days of all time. And uh, it's, it's really interesting to me how connected the whole city is. Now, one of the things that I noticed immediately, because we use the subway to get around, uh, is how available public transportation is. There is, it's really easy to get around in New York because of all the public transportation. Now, one of the things that people complain about when they come to Kansas City is that uh, you have to have a car. You're not going to get anywhere you want to go unless you have a car because there's not a lot of available public transportation. And now that I've been to a few different cities that have uh, great busing systems, that have great train subway systems, they, it's, it's kind of impressive to me that those things exist, that people find such an easy time of getting around. Now, granted, uh, New York is let's call it more congested than Kansas City, so uh, getting around Kansas City, uh, maybe it wouldn't necessarily support the bus system. Of course there are buses, there are 
uh, bus stops around. It's just quite more of a walk to get to one. So, so anyway, so the next day we get up, we have, uh, it was the first time I ever had an everything bagel. And uh, I've, I've had like raisin bagels, I've had blueberry bagels, so uh, I'm not so isolated that I've never had a bagel. I mean, come on, everybody's had a bagel. Well, not necessarily everyone, but I digress. So uh, it was the first time I'd ever had a savory bagel. It's not something that I see very often, uh, at least at the places that I go. I'm sure they're available in Kansas. Now that I know what they are, I'll go looking for them because they're delicious. So, <laughs> so they're really good. Anyway, if you've not had an everything bagel, check it out. It's pretty tasty. So, so we immediately got on the subway in the morning after breakfast and went downtown to the Ghostbusters headquarters. Oh, it was a big thing for me. I couldn't believe it. It's smaller than you think it would be. It's a functioning firehouse. There's there's stuff inside for firemen, and it's not open to the public. But uh, we went there and looked inside, and they have a big Ghostbusters 2 sign up in the corner, and uh, uh, we looked inside. We didn't go inside. We looked in the windows, and it was kind of it was kind of a big thing for me because uh, 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 for those of you who are aware, I love the Ghostbusters, and the fact that uh, I could visit the firehouse was a lot of fun. Now things that we did for food out there uh, we went to they said you have to try the pizza you gotta try the pizza when you go to New York is what they said to me so I went and uh, I'll say this that uh, I don't necessarily know how great the pizza because we didn't go to a lot of places we went to one place it was like New Pizza Town 2 or something like that yeah I think that's what it's called which was on 7th Street and it was it was good the thing that I'll say about it that really impressed me is, uh, and I kind of noticed this at some of the varying places that we went, was uh, they, the restaurants are, will make more interesting choices. They will have more interesting choices available. So when I went to New Pizza Town, I had a broccoli pizza. Uh, I had a chicken pizza, and uh, I had a broccoli pizza. So <laughs> I had two slices, and, which is quite a lot of food. You really don't need more than one slice, but my eyes got bigger than my stomach. I was like, ooh, chicken pizza, broccoli pizza, let's try that. But uh, it was very good. And that's the thing is that uh, there's some more bold choices. Now that's why I would say that, uh, uh, now granted some people would say like, you went to whatever place, you really didn't get a good example of what New York pizza is like. I don't know. Uh, we went there and I tried the pizza. I enjoyed it quite a lot. But uh, in fact, I think it was my wife's favorite place. Was that was that pizza place in New York? But uh, you know, we also tried things like uh, uh, we got a hot dog and we got some nuts on uh, on Times Square. So you know, you go to you go to New York, you do these things. Why? Because there's vendors on every corner and in between. So <laughs> there's there's just a lot of available quick stuff to get. That being said, I will also say that I was extremely impressed with uh, some of the delis in New York. I don't really remember the names of the delis we went to. But uh, we had uh, paninis, we had all of this other stuff, which, again, are available in, in Kansas. You can get paninis in Kansas. But uh, the thing about it was that uh, they had some more interesting choices. They had more unique flavors together, which, I mean, in the land of barbecue, it's kind of uh, meat and sauce, and your vegetables are on the side, and, and your fruit's separate, and uh, it's... These delis that we went to, what I thought was so unique for, uh, or what I thought was so interesting about them was that uh, sweet and savory were mixed together, and uh, they, they made for a more interesting flavor note. It was, it was, it was a lot of fun for me to, to go to these delis. It was kind of the, uh, in the way of food, I think the delis were the high point for me. Now, let's see here. So we went from the Ghostbusters place, we went to Federal Hall. Federal Hall was really interesting. Their air conditioner was broken, so it was it was hot. Hot. <laughs> in Federal Hall. But, uh, so we didn't spend a heck of a lot of time in there. We kind of went in there long enough to look at the exhibits uh, and uh, and go to the gift shop, get a magnet, and get out. So my my wife likes to collect magnets from the places that she goes. So, uh, anyway. So we go, we go to the, we go to Federal Hall, and we talk to a gentleman out there, and he says, "Hey, uh, where else are you guys going? Let me, maybe I can give you directions." So we said, "Yeah, sure." We wanted to go to the African American burial grounds, and uh, so he said that we could uh, get, make it there via this route, blah blah. So uh, 
it wasn't exactly close, but it wasn't exactly far. So we walk for about a half hour. We get there. We find out they're closed. We get annoyed, and then we find the nearest subway. <laughs> and uh, so we we hop on the subway, and we go to a place that I kind of uh, was really excited to go. I've always seen advertisements for it in comic books, but uh, uh, I was kind of excited. We went to... Midtown Comics, that's right. So a lot of people in New York probably go to Midtown Comics. It's kind of a big thing. So we went there and uh, picked up a picked up a couple things. I bought a comic book I needed, and I bought a Wolfman wallet with uh, these these uh, these little pistols on the front under his face. They they also had uh, a Frankenstein with like some lightning bolts and and the creature from the Black Lagoon. But uh, I liked the Wolfman, so I got the Wolfman. Now. Th the thing that uh, I really enjoyed about Midtown Comics, or at least the one that I went to on Times Square, Midtown Comics has a lot of statues. That was its thing. They had statues everywhere. Now, they had lots of new comics. They had lots of, lots of trades available. Uh, and they did have a lot of back issues available. But the thing that you would immediately notice is... Uh, how many statues they have. I mean, well, I guess you go to the second floor, they have more up there, but uh, uh, there's it's there's there's a lot of stuff that's not just comic books, but uh, the big thing that uh, you can't help but go around and look at, like it's like it's an art exhibit, are the, the statues. So, it's, it's really interesting out there. And I'll say this, that uh, at the comic book stores I went to, because I went to some in some other cities, uh, the... Uh, the clientele is still largely the same. A, a, a comic book fan is a comic book fan, and you know you, you tend to see the same types of people. You uh, normal people read comic books. I said it. How dare I say it? Anyway, you know people. It's 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 an interesting thing where you walk in and you see largely the same crowd of people you see everywhere else. You're like, well, you know, we all like comics, and we're we're normal people, so deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's not the uh, worst comic ever type guys. It's the uh, it's the hey, I want to buy a comic type of guy. It's 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 a pretty typical crowd. Anyway, now uh, so Midtown was a lot of fun. I enjoyed that place, and uh, it was it was kind of a nice break for my wife because she could sit down and say, oh man, I've been walking a lot today. <laughs> so she sat down while I looked at the store, and. Uh, from there, we moved on to, uh, we looked at a couple stores around around Midtown, and we, or around, uh, well, I guess they would be Midtown, around Times Square, but uh, we went to an, an art exhibit called Art of the Brick. Now, uh, that, for those of you who are not aware, is an art exhibit that's full of Legos. A, uh, a, an artist decided at one point that he was going to make his sculptures out of Legos, and uh, the first part of the exhibit is his or is his mimicry of other things, kind of making making other art pieces three dimensional or just making them out of Legos. So uh, I think it's interesting the efforts to make something that exists out of Legos. Now I, I was walking through there, going like, "This is really neat. This is really cool." Uh, his Starry Night was really cool. His Scream was really cool, uh, but. Uh, I kind of thought, I want to see some original pieces. Why? Because the big thing that they advertise, there was a Discovery Channel, like, in tandem with Discovery Channel exhibit, and they have a, uh, a Lego man pulling his chest open with a bunch of Legos spilling out. Now, when you walk into this, they, they show you a video about, uh, about him, about, about the artist, about the, the, the medium making things with Legos. And uh, they show a hand that, that's what was interesting, is they show him building this, this giant gray hand holding one block, uh, one red Lego block. And it's, you know, essentially saying that it all starts with one thing. You know, you just got to go out and you got to, uh, you can do art, you can do this stuff yourself, you just have to try. So it all starts with the first piece which I thought was a really interesting thing. And then the, the screen lifts and they show the art piece behind it, so I thought that was really cool. Uh, it's, it's interesting to me how many unique pieces are out there. And uh, uh, I will say this, that a lot of the time when I go to see modern art, uh, uh, when I go to see classic art, I just kind of go, yep, 
that's classic art, but when I go to see modern art, I try to critique it. I, I kind of say, like, well, this is what this means to me, and this is what this is. In, or, uh, this guy did this really interesting, you see that? But uh, one of the things that I, that I always kind of get annoyed with when I go to modern art museums is that, uh, which, if you're going to ask, no, we didn't go to the Museum of Modern Art. We ran out of time. But, uh, so, so uh, uh, one of the things that kind of annoys me, or we did not go to the Museum of Modern Art, just in case that wasn't understandable, but uh, one of the things that kind of annoys me when I go to modern art places is that sometimes it seems kind of pretentious. Like there's a red dot on a white background and says, this symbolizes this. And like, okay, well this could you know, feasibly symbolize most anything. I mean, it's, it's, it kind of annoys me when, uh, when some things are so pretentious to say like this has a discernible, a distinct meaning but it's largely chaos, or it's largely, or it's just too simple to really point at anything in particular. And uh, maybe that makes me not savvy with the art crowd, but uh, I get kind of annoyed when I see pretension like that. But uh, the thing that about the, the art of the brick, this guy's art is interesting without being pretentious. It's not pretentious. It's really, it's really down to earth. And, uh, some of the titles are pretty are pretty plain, but some of the pieces are really intricate. That's that's what's interesting to me, is that uh, he will have an idea, he will build a piece around that idea, and uh, what you get out of it's what you get out of it, and it doesn't have to belabor what the what the artist intended, because uh, what the art what the artist intended is pretty obvious, but it's still an interesting piece anyway. He he constructs something that's that's interesting and beautiful out of Legos. And uh, not only that, is that well, I think what I like the most about, uh, I think a piece of art really does its job when it doesn't have to tell you, when you don't have to read the tag beside it to uh, see what it's about. Now, you, if you read the tag beside it, I want to see what the influence is. I want to see what, what was going through the writer, or not the writer, the, the artist's mind. And uh, uh, so I can figure out a little bit about them. But their piece, I want it to speak for itself. Now, it's it's one thing if I'm not, if I don't know enough about uh, a particular topic to see what that's really about. But uh, I usually think that that art should say something about the human condition. So that's what's interesting is that all of these pieces said something about the human condition. Well, except for the stuff that was mimicry of other things. That was more just uh, his form and showing you how how much he can do with with what he uses. But uh, it's anyway. I'm gonna move on. It be it was a really interesting. It was a really interesting exhibit, and I highly recommend it for people who uh, uh, have it in their city. Uh, I think it's gonna be in New York for a little while, but uh, uh, I think it's going also kind of roaming. So I do not believe it was a permanent installation. Now let's see here. What else did we do? So we we left the art of the brick. We went to one of those delis that I enjoyed so much, and then we we took in a Broadway show, which. Uh, if you're gonna do a Broadway show, go to the box office and buy tickets because uh, buying them from like your hotel or wherever is not a particularly great deal. Go to the box office and buy your tickets. Anyway, so we were trying to figure out which show we wanted to see, and uh, I wouldn't have even minded seeing an off-Broadway show because Avenue Q is playing, and I thought I kind of want to see Avenue Q, but my wife was not interested. So uh, we. While we were walking around these, or while we were walking on Broadway, we saw the uh, uh, we saw an advertisement for Newsies, and uh, Newsies was an interesting play. Uh, uh, I think I'll tackle that in a separate video. But uh, uh, we were seven rows from the front and on the aisle, and it was it was a really interesting production. I had a lot of fun. But uh, afterwards, I realized that. Uh, B.B. King has a bar in New York City. I was really excited about this idea. We walked by it earlier, and uh, they said, I asked the guys, hey, who's playing tonight? What's going on tonight? And they said, well, there's a rap show playing. And I said, I... all right, well. And they said, but we're going to have live blues in the bar. And I said, really? <laughs> so, so, you know, not, that I, not to say that I don't enjoy some rap. I like some rap. Rap's alright, but uh, I love blues. You know, rap's okay, but I love blues. Like, uh, country's okay, but I love rockabilly. You know what I mean? So, uh, I really enjoy blues. 
And the, the fact that they were having a blues show that night just, just energized me. I had to go. And uh, my wife said, all right, sure, why not? Uh, she doesn't necessarily care for blues, so she kind of went as a favor to me because she knew that this isn't something I was going to get to do. Uh, in Kansas City, there's a lot of uh, jazz to be found, but uh, blues is a little harder. you got to kind of look for it. So uh, this was going to be kind of a big moment for me, just easily found blues. So we went to this place, and we're, they had this long line to get tickets for the uh, the rap show, and... I went, you know, do I really, like, do they really want people who just want to go to the bar to stand in this line? This seems kind of silly, uh, because I could be buying drinks <laughs> while, while I'm standing in that line if I were actually in the bar. So I talked to the bouncer for a second and say, hey, uh, I just want to go to the bar. I don't want to see this, sh this, this rap show. I want to go see the blue show. And uh, the bouncer couldn't get a word out before some dude jumps from behind the, this obviously drunk man jumps from behind the line and says hey man if you want to get into this rap show I can get you in I got half the money right here you just pay my other half I'll get you in I said I don't want to go to the rap show I want to go to the bar I want to go see the blues and uh, he says don't do it man don't go in there and I said what <laughs> I said, I said I don't want to go see the rap show I want to go see the blues show and he says so don't don't do it, man. I got I got half the money right here. Get me in. I said. <laughs> I said I'm sorry, fella. I don't want to do it. I'm sorry. I'm not gonna go see this rap show. And the bouncer turns and says, "You guys want to go to the bar?" He, he just turned and started laughing at us. And I said said yes, we would love to go to the bar. And he says, "Hey." And he calls to one of the guys working there. He says, "Let these people through. They're going to the bar." So we go down to the bar, and uh, there's so. I kind of feel like maybe that's, the bar was largely empty, and I kind of feel like maybe that line is what was keeping people from getting into the bar uh, to know that that's still open tonight. So, anyway, so we get into the bar, and uh, it's it's smoky, but there's nobody smoking, so I wonder if they had a smoke machine in there. Uh, it was an interesting environment, but uh, I was like, wow, this is cool, this is like, this is a great blues bar, and I was like, it's smoky, but... Nobody's smoking. Well, that's weird. Anyway, so we go and we uh, we order some drinks. And uh, while we're sitting there, my wife leans over to me and says, Hey, there's a guy sitting next to you with a guitar. Maybe you want to talk to him. And I said, I kind of do. Thank you. So I look over at this guy, and I, and I end up chatting with him for quite a long time. And uh, we, we have largely a pretty decent conversation. And... Uh, and I had a lot of fun, and I got his card so I could look him up later. Uh, he sat in with the band. He wasn't with the band, but he was uh, he was friends, and he sat in with these guys for a couple songs. So uh, no more than five minutes was was I talking to him before he stood up and went and played with the band. And that gentleman's name is Roger Bartlett at rogerbartlett.com. So, uh, yeah, check out Roger Bartlett. <laughs> because uh, he did very well. He, he's very dexterous with his guitar, and he has a very interesting singing voice. And uh, I really enjoyed it. So he gets up, and he plays with the band for a little bit, and then he comes back down, and he, and he, and he sits down, and we, we chat a little bit longer. So uh, after a little bit, or after a while, he, he gets up to leave, and the band goes on break. And uh, I think, ah, I'm going to go talk to these members of this band. And what I thought was kind of funny was that uh, uh, it was, you know, somebody going up to talk to the band. It's not necess you're not necessarily interested to talk to the listeners. Uh, you're more interested to entertain them. You want to be, you want them to be involved in the show, but you don't necessarily, uh, you, you kind of want to take a break. You don't want to just stand there and chat with people all the time. Anyway, so I went up and just said, hey, man, you know, uh, to, all these, to all these musicians, I was like, hey, thanks, guys, for, for playing, and this is, a, this is a lot of fun for me, and, I, and I'm really enjoying your show. And that was going to be the extent of it. And they were trying to be polite. And they're like, yeah, yeah, thanks for thanks for coming. And uh, they were kind of talking to me from like, yeah, yeah, you know, thanks for coming. And uh, uh, it was, it's you know, it's it's good for people to come out. It's not there's not a lot of people here tonight, so you know, it's it's nice to have somebody here. And uh, what's interesting to me is they 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 were kind of trying to uh, end the conversation so they could rest a little bit. And they said, they said, where are you from? And I said Kansas City. And the guy said, really, Kansas City. <laughs> So, uh, uh, pretty much everybody in that group of people went, Really? You're from Kansas City? And uh, what was interesting to me is they, they were so interested in, 
me being from Kansas City. And they said, now that's in Missouri, right? And I said, well, it's part in Missouri, partly in Kansas. And they're like, oh, <laughs> they were so interested that uh, it, they kept the conversation going. And it was, it, was, it was a lot of fun to just go there and kind of and talk to these people and, and, and see uh, where these people are from, what, what influences them. And, and uh, now the singer and harmonica player tossed me a handful of uh, guitar picks, and I'm assuming that his name being on the back, or I'm assuming that is his name on the back, uh, www. which is not his name, but uh, johnparis.com, J-O-N, Paris. So uh, uh, he said, here, have a guitar pick. And I was like, oh, thank you, I appreciate that. And uh, in fact, he handed me a few guitar picks, and uh, so he handed me four, so I'm going to keep one. I'm going to give the other three to my ushers, because I had three ushers at the wedding. I thought they might enjoy it. But... Uh, it was, it was, a, it was a really rewarding experience to me, for for me. And not only that, but my wife, who has always told me she doesn't like blues, is now a convert and says. So she said to me while we were at the bar, she said, "Wow, Vince, I never realized that I liked blues." And I said, "I'm telling you, I'm telling you, there's good jazz. I'm telling you, there's good blues. There's stuff that you will enjoy." <laughs> and because uh, when. When I first met her, I said, hey, uh, or she asked me what kind of music I like, and I said uh, blues, rockabilly, uh, jazz, and she's like, oh, mm, that's unfortunate. I said, what? <laughs> uh, I don't think she realizes, because uh, since then, on separate occasions, I've played all three of these kinds of music, and she has said, uh, wow, I like that, and I said, well, that's rockabilly, or that's blues, or that's jazz, or, or, or that's metal. I'm like, you enjoy this, you just don't realize what you enjoy. Anyway, moving on. So that was that was a lot of fun. So uh, and there, I also had uh, some Brooklyn beers. I had some uh, uh, some New York State brews. It was really it was it was a lot of fun. They had a lot of stuff I'd never tried before. And the bartender, uh, he kind of caught on after my third drink or so that I kept ordering something different every time I came up. <laughs> and I would come up and I would order something different. He would laugh and I said, "What?" He says, "You get something different every time. It's funny." And I said, "Yeah, it's true. You know, most people have their go-to drinks." But I'm um, like, you know, I don't get this New York stuff in Kansas. This is, you know, you can get a lot of Kansas stuff in Kansas, but uh, you go to another state, you might as well try what's out there. Moving on. So we went back to the hotel and we crashed. It was nice. But uh, the next day we got up and we went to the birthplace of Theodore Roosevelt. And uh, that was really interesting. It was extremely interesting. And, and uh, the guys there were very friendly. And uh, the guys there were... Uh, uh, super knowledgeable about Teddy Roosevelt. In fact, apparently this is a thing. They call themselves Ted Heads, people who uh, really enjoy Teddy Roosevelt. And uh, he's the guy who took us on this tour was was knowledgeable and excited to tell you about it. Uh, but not just that he was excited to tell you about it. Like, oh no, let me tell you this. He was passionate. This is something that he does. That he apparently this man's been a park ranger for over like, 20 years or something, and uh, he 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 learns this stuff not because it's for his job but because he loves it, and it was really interesting to me, and I had a had a really good time in the birthplace of Theodore Roosevelt. Anyway, uh, we left there. We went to Rockefeller Center. Our uh, well, largely our last sightseeing place that we went before we left town. I have a friend, Luke, he's been on the show before, uh, or one of our shows, and uh, Luke said, I love Saturday Night Live, Vince. Vince, would you please pick up something for me? A t-shirt, a hat, whatever they have. So we went out and we found a t-shirt for him at Rockefeller Center in the NBC store. And uh, so I'm in the NBC store and my wife goes somewhere to use the restroom and I'm just kind of looking around, holding a t-shirt, holding a uh, uh, Chris Farley bobblehead that they had on sale. As a matter of fact, give me a second. A Matt Foley bobblehead <laughs> that they had on sale. So I picked that up. And uh, so this girl, I, there's this girl working there and I, and I start talking to her for a little bit. She said, she said, uh, is there anything I can help you find? And I said, ah, I'm just waiting for my wife to get back from the bathroom. And uh, she I said, oh, these bobbleheads are on sale, huh? And she said, yeah. And they're like, I think they were like 20 bucks or something, but they're trying to get rid of them, so I bought it for five. <laughs> Wee! But uh, I said, do you have any other SNL bobbleheads? 
because you know I, I would have I would have enjoyed buying uh, maybe a Goat Boy or something. I don't know, but uh, or or a Blues Brother. Oh my God, that would have been cool. But this was really the only SNL bobblehead they had. So she gives me this kind of spiel on the bobbleheads, and she says, "Well, we have Tracy Morgan," and I said, "Ah, I don't really care for." For Tracy Morgan and says, well, we have Parks and Recreation in the office and we have uh, some of these other things. And I said, yeah, it's not really my type of show. I, I just, and then I started thinking about it and I thought, wow, there's not a lot of NBC televising that I care for, or current NBC televising that I care for anyway. And uh, <laughs> I wanted to go on the tour of, uh, of SNL, but that was that was in a block of tours for uh, like the Jimmy Fallon show and all these other things and I said yeah I don't care to go see those uh, the only one I wanted to see was SNL and I thought maybe maybe I just don't care enough to to go through the rest of that to go see the SNL tour now had my friend Luke been there granted of course he wasn't because it was my honeymoon but had my friend Luke been there uh, we probably would have done it so we would have gone through this thing and it wasn't it wasn't a bad deal it was really a pretty decent uh, uh, price for for how much you were, they were going to take you to go see around Rockefeller Center, but uh, which had some really beautiful like, paintings on the inside on the walls and it was really it was really a nice building anyway. Uh, so I was I was very impressed with the architecture on my whole trip. Moving on, so I I, I eventually I kind of feel bad because I'm telling this girl that I really don't care for the shows that she's trying to pitch me. <laughs> so so I kind of make my exodus. And I walk by these doors. I'm not even critiquing things. I'm just telling you about my trip. But uh, I walk by the, the entrance doors, and suddenly everybody and their brother comes in. And I'm trying to find my way around there. And uh, I, I'm trying. The only way that I can, the only clear path is outside. But I'm holding stuff that I've not paid for. So I, I kind of make my way through the crowd, and this guy stops me and says, "Hey, uh, is there anything I can help you find?" And I said, "Nah." I think I found everything that I want. I just trying to look like I'm not stealing stuff because I was walking by the entrance, and uh, the the guy said, "Look like you're not stealing stuff." And I said, "Making it evident that I'm not stealing stuff." And uh, he says, "Oh, okay." And and he says, "Well, was there was there anything you were looking for for any particular reason?" And I was like, "Well, I'm just out here on my honeymoon." And he says, "Your honeymoon? Where are you from?" He said, "He said your honeymoon, and you came to Rockefeller Center." I said. Yeah, said well. It's, this isn't something that's close to where I live. And he said, uh, "Oh, where are you from?" And I said, uh, "Kansas City." And he said, "Kansas City." And here I thought you were a regular guy. I don't know what that means. <laughs> and he said, "Well, I, I guess." And I said, "No, no, I'm a regular guy. I'm just from Kansas City." And he said, "Well, you know, you don't you don't look like a tourist." And I said, "Well, I I tried to leave my." Uh, my Hawaiian shirt and fanny pack at home. <laughs> so I was I was wearing my Nikes, my jeans, and, and this T-shirt. Come to think of it, and uh, no hat. I was going hatless that day. And uh, he said, "I thought you were a regular guy." And I said, "Well, I, I guess I'll take that as a compliment." You. Uh, and what's interesting is I started thinking about it. How many people were stopping? my wife and I for directions. Hey, can you guys tell us how to get to the blah blah embassy or can you guys tell us how to get here? I said, no, we're not from here. What are you talking about? Anyway, I thought it was kind of silly how many people asked us for directions. We were asked for directions immediately as we got out of the airport. This Australian girl stopped us and said, hey, uh, can you tell me how to get to this hotel? And we said, nope, <laughs> we don't know. Sorry. Anyway, moving on. Last thing we did was we went to the uh, we we rented a car and the people there were extremely nice. In fact, they the car that we rented was pretty much unavailable and uh, or the the type of car we rented was pretty much unavailable. So they said, uh, okay, well we'll just upgrade you, and it was for free. It was really nice of them. So yeah, the the New Yorkers. I had a great experience with so many New Yorkers. It was it was a lot of fun. But uh, so we rent this car and we're trying to drive out of New York City. We're trying to get into the Lincoln Tunnel, and uh, oh my goodness, driving in New York City is kind of difficult. There's one thing you can't make, or there's one thing that you cannot do around five o'clock or six o'clock, and that's make a left. <laughs> I 
kind of take it for granted out here. In fact, you know, in Kansas City, there are places on uh, on one of the main streets there, or in Overland Park, there's a main street called uh, Metcalf. And uh, making a left on Metcalf means that everybody behind you is going to wait for a few minutes, and that's kind of annoying. But uh, in New York, you straight up cannot make a left. If, if you wanted to, you'd probably get in trouble because you would be holding up traffic. So eventually I, I, said, I said to my wife, let's, let's make three rights. That's the same thing as making a left. <laughs> so, so we ended up having to make three rights just to get to where we were going. But uh, there's so many people that, uh, and there's so many cars, and it's just, it was, it was really kind of an interesting experience again. So you're almost in an entirely different world when you're on foot, as opposed to when you're in a car in New York City. Anyway, uh, we eventually got out of there, and then we drove to uh, an Ikea, because that's, my, my wife really enjoys Ikea. She's, she's part Swedish, and her family on her mother's side's uh, almost entirely Swedish, I don't know, pure blood Swedish. I don't know. It seems weird to say, but uh, uh, they they really appreciate their Swedish heritage, and uh, uh, not only that, but so many of them really enjoy interior decorating. That uh, IKEA is kind of a big thing for them, so they love IKEA. So we went to IKEA, had dinner. I, f I forget it was IKEA in New Jersey somewhere. And uh, no, I did not stop at Jay and Silent Bob's <laughs> secret stash. Uh, I wanted to, but uh, we, we'd we already gone far enough south before we realized it was way behind us. Anyway, so we we went to Ikea, and then we drove down to uh, Atlantic City. And uh, that's for another video. This video is long enough. So uh, thanks for watching Vince vs. New York City, i.e. Vince vs. the first part of the honeymoon. So thanks for watching Vince vs., and we'll catch you later.